Let's jump in our time machine and go back to one of the two great battles we've had with Harvard Center of Astrophysics. With this morning's story about nova isotopes on Earth, it is worth revisiting the real science on this topic, and I will try to do it in a way that is very simple to understand. Let's watch the rundown video from 2020, and I will be inserting breaks for more explanation. Here's the backstory. Dust delivered isotopes from supernova are discovered on Earth. Scientists know that it must have been a relatively nearby nova after the formation of our solar system. They know this because the isotopes don't last that long. A long ago nova likely seeded the sun and all the nearby stars, but that was too long ago for these isotopes. And if it was from far away, it would take too long for the dust to arrive at Earth. There has been a smoking gun piece of evidence to suggest that indeed a recurrent micronova from our sun is to blame. And now that concept comes under fire from a place that commands the ears and respect of the established academic world. Dr. Jonathan David Slavin from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics is publishing on the survivability of that dust and presence in the heliosphere, thereby facilitating the delivery to Earth. The paper suggests that a solid enough fraction of the dust from nearby Nova could have indeed been the Earth's source of those isotopes. This is actually the formalization of a conference submission made earlier in the year, wrapping up his findings now, and indeed he is considered a top expert on dust destruction by Nova shocks. Now, In this work, the conclusion to the direct question of whether that Nova dust could be transported to the Earth from somewhere other than the Sun is a yes. Let's look at the work and it will quickly become clear where the differences lie. So this began after we were discussing the evidence for solar micronova in December of 2018. And while it doesn't address the multiple lines of evidence, the Harvard guy here and his team definitely suggest that the dust can absolutely arrive here from nova events on other stars, even despite the rapid decay rates of some of them and the problems that poses. So why would you not just believe the Harvard guy, right? Let's go back to the video. First, they use the presumption that the grains exist within a pre-existing nova cavity, and indeed, that's not bad. That would be the local void or local bubble of that long-ago supernova that seeded our local stellar neighborhood today. They do say it is speculation and that those calculations have not been carried out, and we will come back to that. The core issue in this analysis is the presumption that magnetic fields are not important amidst the gas through which the dust is moving, and so... Slavin decides not to model them. Now that should be a giant red flag. And indeed, in critiquing another work in the field, in this same paper, Slavin calls out the red flag of their ignoring magnetic fields in their model. But didn't you just... never mind. Twin red rectangles blowing in the breeze there. That's right. In this paper, they not only scoff at a different team for ignoring magnetic fields, but they ignore them in their own analysis. That is both goofy and hypocritical, and it's scientifically shameful in how they ignored such a fundamental feature, the magnetic fields. Let's go back to the video. But back to his speculation about the survival of the dust within the local bubble, which he says has not been properly calculated. Well, it has, just not in the parameter space of his model. It has, on the other hand, been modeled while not ignoring the magnetic fields. This team isn't exactly second-rate. They hold positions at the Air Force Science Division, CERN, King's College London, and the University of Illinois. If you recall, publishing in arguably the most important astrophysics journal on the planet, showing that the magnetic fields are important in the restriction of those dust grains to the Nova Remnant, and not their blasting out into space to seed the Earth, for example, which, of course, leaves only one possible source for those isotopes on Earth. So yes, not only does the decay rate of some of the isotopes make other stars problematic culprits for the nova isotope presence on Earth, but the nova dust carrying those isotopes should be trapped inside of the remnant. Unless, of course, you wish to intentionally omit critical aspects of the analysis. Let's go back to the video. Lastly, this new work by Slavin, while it will criticize a paper for ignoring what it ignores itself, it does not address or even cite the dusty magnetic pinball paper. Seems like that one should be addressed or at least mentioned. This may not matter much to you, but for serious scientists, it is important to address and counter studies that oppose your own. 
kind of like I'm doing here with the Harvard guy who says we are wrong. His lack of doing so is very telling, especially given how many papers he did cite in composing his work. It's a grand failure. As many of you know, there are other scientists at Harvard who are on our side, and they've told me how my video got under Slavin's skin, and that I was referred to as an unrespectable pseudoscientist conspiracy theorist. My, my. Don't flatter, Dr. Slavin. Instead, why don't you come take one more whack at this? See if you can do better on the second try. And second try he did, except once again, intentionally ignoring the magnetic fields. It's hard to really come to terms with exactly what happened here in this little battle between us and Harvard, but one thing I can say for sure is whether you're looking at plasma cosmology versus dark matter, mainstream climate science versus solar forcing of the terrestrial atmosphere, or you're right here looking at nova astronomy and whether or not to include the magnetic fields. In every case, that which they choose to ignore is the only way they come to the conclusions that are force-fed to us through the media. In reality, we should know better. And it would actually be funny if it wasn't so scientifically sad and coming out of Harvard. Right now, there are several affirmative proponents of the solar micronova, including some at major institutions who wish to remain in the shadows. The list of those who are now at least considering it is actually too long to break out here. Folks, while Doug Vogt and I have a lot of differences in our physical description of the solar nova, the cause, the power, the impact to Earth, I will always credit his work in bringing to light all the isotopes that exist here on Earth and how many can only come from nova events. It was the catalyst that finally convinced me the sun does nova. While some isotopes like aluminum do last long enough to be explained in Slavin's way, several others do not, including some of the really rare ones. Those must be from the sun. Other ones like iron, which do survive for millions of years, certainly long enough to get here, those are the most susceptible to magnetic fields. We're talking about iron, and those would have certainly been trapped with the other dusty pinballs within the remnant. Alas, our second battle with Harvard went the same as the first one did. The nova isotopes on Earth are the most vital piece of the solar micronova puzzle, and no, you cannot just ignore magnetic fields. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.